Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here. And from today, we start a new topic. And that is the topic of rectifiers. So, uh, previously, we discussed the diode circuits, different circuit analysis, uh, where I asked in the, you guys to tell me if you want more examples or not. But then, uh, obviously, I have not seen the comments yet because that video has not been uploaded yet. Because you know they are made a little earlier than they are uploaded but the thing is that I believe those book examples are more than enough if you have any queries you can definitely ask in the comment section. So I finished that topic of diode configurations over there and today we start a new topic and that is from now now we are moving on into the diode applications where we start the first and the simplest of all that is the rectifier circuits. So let's keep writing on the board. Today we start the topic of rectifiers. Uh, now, as the name suggests, so rectifier, uh, rectify. What do we mean by rectify? So we mean correction. So what would this circuit do? This would do some sort of correction depending on our requirements, what we want it to do basically. What it does is it converts an AC waveform into a DC waveform. Now till now we, the circuit that we saw, so we had a DC voltage source, a battery. Now we are moving on to circuits where we have time varying sources. The most important that we see are the sinusoidal inputs and the square wave. So in rectifiers we mostly talk of the sinusoidal inputs. The book discusses it. You can have any sort of inputs, but let's say starting from the very basic, the time varying signal that's a sinusoid. So what do we do is we rectify that uh, we rectify that sinusoidal signal into some sort of an another signal. And what's that rectification? That is an AC to DC conversion. Sinusoid is what? It's an AC signal, right? Yes. So what do we do is rectifi rectifier is from the word rectify and rectify means what correction and the correction that we are doing in this particular case is AC to DC conversion. AC to DC conversion, right? Yes. Now uh, we would have a little categories. So rectifier, then we have two types of rectifiers. The first is a half wave rectifier uh, and the second one is the full wave rectifier. Now we will understand the difference between the two. Then in the full wave rectifier, we have a bridge rectifier circuit and then we have a, 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 a center tape transformer. So uh, this is what we are going to study. So you can say that we have three videos on the thing rectifiers. In this particular, now what does these two do? What's the difference? They all so, so that you'll understand with the passage of time once we are done with all. So the first that today we are going to start is the half wave rectifier. And now again, as the name suggests, it would rectify half of the signal half of the wave of the signal. So the circuit is as simple as you want. We have an input time varying source over here. We have a diode connected across it. Across what? Across a load element which is let's say a resistor R. Let's say we have a resistor RL. This is this is an ideal or whatever diode. Let me name it a D for a diode and the output is taken across the terminals of this resistor. This is just a simple half wave rectifier circuit. Fine? Yes. Now, when we input is a sinusoidal waveform. So a sinusoidal waveform. So let me draw the graphs as well. So if if Let's say, let's say this is my input waveform with respect to T or omega T or whatever. So let me draw the positive half cycle with the red color. Uh, then again, let's extend this a little. And this repeats omega t let's say 
and the negative half cycle I will represent with the green color draw it properly please draw it properly for yourself in your notebooks so this would be t by 2 this is t this 3 by 2 2t and so on so if this is the t by 2 point this is the t point so let's say we are interested till the first half cycle only so in the first half cycle what happens is you would have this is the positive half cycle incoming so you would have like this sort of a polarity right so if i draw the circuit what would what would what would happen is you have a positive connected to the p side a negative connected to the n side it's making it a forward biased let's say this is a this is an ideal diode we don't have any barrier potential so a direct p to the positive direct n to the negative gives you a the conduction state or let's say we talk about the the, the the practical diode as well let's say first the the ideal diode so so what would happen basically this is for the positive cycle the equivalent circuit so this would become a short circuit and you have it like this this is if let's say the plus minus rl polarity we output is across it so what happens a current flows through it which would follow the same relation as this one v input is what this is the current flowing in the circuit v input is the sinusoidal we have maximum value sine of omega t so the current follows the same relation again the output current would have the same relation. i am sine of omega t so V input becomes equal to V output. So in the first case, in the first case, what do we have is if this is my T by 2, this is my T, what happens? The V input has just been copied to the V output. So V input comes across the output. This is the case where this peak value this is the vm this is the vm right now this is the graph for the output now what will happen for the negative cycle when this cycle this become negative when this side becomes positive so the polarity reverses so negative connect to p side positive to n side the diode has become reverse biased so which means now if this is an this is an ideal diode so if this is your negative this is positive this has to be replaced with an open circuit and no current flows in the circuit and the v output across the terminals of the resistor is zero so this is zero so this is what i am talking about that you have done what you have rectified the circuit you have corrected the given uh, you have rectified the input signal you have corrected the input signal by doing what by converting a pure ac signal into a pulsating dc signal although it's not a pure dc but it is a sort of a dc which is a pulsating dc is that fine it is now what happens if you talk about the this is for the ideal diode this we output this is for the ideal diode now let's say if you have a silicon diode if you have a silicon diode so what happens you would have to include the barrier potential as well so let's say for silicon what would be the case now this would be your uh, v input plus minus and, and you have to replace it by a barrier potential and this would be the case this is a plus minus v output so if a current flows you have your uh, v input is equal to so v barrier plus v output which means that your v output would be v input minus v barrier 
and one other thing you would have another point as well over here and that point would be that the diode will not turn on until the input voltage is greater than the barrier potential of the diode so let's say the barrier potential of the diode is is this one right let's say this is the barrier potential of the diode level this is vb so this is the amount of time taken to reach and similarly on this side similarly over here you could say so let me bring this time downward let me note this time this is t by 2 this is t so what will happen in this case the diode will not turn on until the, the, the applied potential is greater than the barrier potential of the diode and for then that time is this time so which means that till hit this one also in the forward bias state this would be zero although it's forward biasing the diode but the potential is not greater than this barrier potential so it will not conduct and similarly at this side as well the barrier potential applied input voltage is less than the barrier potential fine so if this is t so let's say this is the point over here we have zero here we have zero is that fine and similarly this is for the negative cycle the green color is for the negative cycle now the peak the peak would also be vm minus the barrier potential the peak would be vm minus vb similarly if for the ideal diode this was copying the v input directly this would not be now vi this would be vi minus vb this is for a practical diode for practical diode which has a barrier potential and the open circuit would be which would be zero the output voltage again anyways and so you can have the voltage across the diode as well so the voltage across the diode would be zero in the forward bias state in the ideal case it would be equal to the v input in the reverse bias state so you can draw the graph for yourself and i believe this is just a simple topic of the half wave uh, rectifier but let's say one thing that we have is uh, the the average output voltage the average output voltage so uh, let's say we just write the relation the average output voltage so these are some important terms so i would just name it as a v average so what what is it doing basically so my input volt my output voltage v output is vm sine of omega t when from 0 to pi right from from 0 to 180 degrees yes at 90 it's maximum and similarly v naught is equal to 0 from pi to 2 pi or you could write it in terms of t and t by 2 as well so the average voltage would be what v average this would be equal to the integration 0 to 2 pi and also you have a outside you have 1 over 2 pi v naught and this is integrated with respect to omega t so what would you have you have a 1 over 2 pi now i'm very weak in these integrations okay so you have a 0 to 2 pi you have vm sine of omega t with respect to omega t and then plus uh, uh wait 0 to pi and then pi to 2 pi a 0 with respect to omega t so this comes out to be 0 this i know and then sine has an integration of minus of cos right so vm is first of all a constant this would come outside so you have a v average is equal to vm upon 2 pi and then the integration of sine is minus of cos omega t 
and the limits are pi and 0. So cos of pi is minus 1. Yes? Yes. So you have a Vm upon 2 pi. So you have a cos of pi is minus 1. So you have a minus of minus 1 and then you have a minus uh, times what cos of uh, 0 is 1. So I made a mistake. And what's the mistake? This minus sign. So this minus sign has to be, let's say this minus sign is kept outside with this one. So you have a negative 1, negative 1 becomes a negative 2, negative, negative. This cancels out and this cancels out. So my V average comes out to be Vm by pi or which is 0 0.318 times Vm. So this was an important formula that the book has written. Is that fine till here? It is. Okay. Now from here you could also have the, the average load current. So I average you could also find out from here. So which would be your V average upon R. So this would be your V average upon R. And this will give you Vm upon pi R. And this would be 0.318 times Vm divided by R. So this is your average voltage. Now the book has a simpler example. Let's say we see that in the next video where we also see some other relevant terms. Uh, the peak inverse rating of the diode so the maximum reverse bias the maximum reverse bias uh, uh, voltage that could be across uh, that could be applied across a diode is the peak inverse rating that we've already seen today you have you, you have the chance to see it practically if this is your omega t axis this is your voltage across the diode so in the forward bias case for the ideal diode the entire current there no voltage drop over here so you have a zero till the t by two and then in the open circuit what would happen is uh, so let me just let me take this call please or let it go anyways so uh, in the in the negative cycle what would happen the entire uh, vo input voltage would occur across the diode right so you would have this is equal to uh, v input from t by 2 to t so this is the peak inverse rating the peak inverse rating of the diode is the maximum reverse bias potential that could be applied across the diode before it goes into the breakdown region right so the necessary condition is that this is your vm right the necessary condition is that the peak inverse rating or the peak inverse voltage or the peak reverse rating of a diode should be greater than or equal to the vm yes this is for a half if rectifier Anyway, so I believe I finished this video over here before it gets longer, before it gets boring. See you in the next video with the book example and some other terms. Till then, take care. Goodbye.